Hi everybody, this is She. It's been quite a minute since I've done a vlog. Um, I think my last vlog was uh, in the end of 2015. Uh, so this is my first one of the new year uh, since 2016 has arrived. Um, it's been a very busy year and I think for the most part it's been a good busy I've gone through now January, February, had spring break towards the end of March, and now I'm kind of like finishing out the tail end of the school year. And I just kind of felt like I just had one of those days where I almost broke, where I hit like my, just the ceiling a little bit, and I was like, you know what, I really am done with the school year. Um, but besides you know, the, the feeling of frustration, I kind of wanted to just share where I'm at in my career, as well as my experience being fully, excuse me, fully immersed now in working full time at a school, um, and how that's different from where I was last year. So, I am in my first year being fully certified, fully licensed, feeling very independent, um, it's my first year working in a school where I am based in one school full time because the need is that great. And the caseload is about a little bit over 60 students. However, I do have help from an itinerant SLP who comes in about one to one and a half days a week to help with um, seeing some of the caseload and therapy. And also she helps me with testing. I wanted the experience of working at a school full time just because I'm very, you know, keen and I know a lot about the private practice. And although I do um, prefer the medical model, I did want to have the experience of working just at a school just to kind of figure out within the first five years of just being in the field what is really my preference. And I really know that I enjoy working with children with autism and I do love that about you know my school now it is specifically an autism program not every child there they do have some general education classes but for the majority they do have autism classrooms as well where the class size is you know maybe no more than seven to eight students and there's a teacher paraprofessionals and they still have dedicated aides although I think they're phasing the dedicated aides out of um, just using that term um, and calling um, them something like, uh, I don't remember, I don't know what the term is now, but they're, they're changing the phrase or maybe the title from dedicated aid to I think like adult, um, I forgot what the, what the phrase is, sorry, it's escaping me right now. So, basically... You know, I know some of the things that I have enjoyed about being in a school, and that is, I know the population that really excites me, and that is working with, you know, elementary school aged and middle school aged. And I have worked with high school before. I actually do prefer the older populations, but I love autism. Um, I have a heart for autism. And I also, you know, wanted to know what it was like managing a caseload, a typical caseload. And although I'm not managing the whole caseload because it's my first year at the school, um, I have an idea of what it would be like to manage that many students. And I just don't, I don't see how that's possible or, or effective, but that's a different story. It's a lot of work. I have 38 to 40 students right now and handling their testing, the therapy, the annual reviews, the progress reports, all of that by itself. I mean, it's ridiculous like the amount of time spent you know not not only in direct but in indirect and in revising goals and you know making sure that they're appropriate and that they fit the needs of the student as well as you know consulting with the teachers and a lot of the other you know types of work that's built in that you know you don't really you don't really think takes up a lot of time but it does um i also have been learning so much about custom customizing therapy to fit the individual needs of the student so you know autism is a spectrum and you know I have children who can say word approximations right now I have children who are only echolalic who don't use uh, 
functional communication to manipulate their environments. I have students who are very verbal and, you know, just have problems kind of navigating social communication, learning how to ask questions, learning about appropriate eye contact and those kind of things. So I see a gamut of lots of different goals. You know, I don't only work with articulation. I work with language goals. I work with social communication goals. And so the very, like, therapy experience that I'm getting is awesome. And I'm really grateful for that. The third thing that I'm really getting to experience is really, like, what it feels like to be fully immersed in just one school. So what I really enjoyed about, like, being able to be a contractor before was, like, you know, I was kind of in and out. I didn't really have to be involved. But, like... I really think that there is some great things about being fully immersed in a school or two schools where you spend a lot of, or the most of your time. And that's that you really kind of get to know the people who work there in a more intimate way. You collaborate, you tend to have more time to build better relationships with the teachers and I think that's great. But the downside to that is that you're, <laughs> you're not going to work well with, with everyone. And I think that's just something that I'm starting to see, which is something very difficult for me. Um, just because I've never had to, you know, have so much contact with, with people. And, um, you know, for me, at the end of the day, it's really about the student. It ain't got nothing to do with you don't like me and I don't like you or we don't work with, work well together. Like for me, I'm making these goals, you know, I'm working with you to really fit the needs of, you know, the student. And I have to kind of remember that sometimes when people make me upset and you know people don't know how to collaborate or they don't communicate they don't you know fill in the related service providers on information that's pertinent so I guess that really is the theme of today's vlog today was a very difficult day for me like one of the most difficult days that I can, you know, think of most recently. For the most part, I've been able to manage most of the stress that has come with this position because this position has come with a lot of inherent type of uh, problems that need to be solved. A lot of it was the fact that uh, children had been going uh, now four or five years without having updated testing. So with the county that I work with, uh, children are evaluated every three years. And so doing record reviews, you know, I'm finding students who have not been evaluated for more than four or five years. And, you know, uh, they need updated testing to, you know, reflect where they are now because three years can make a, a big difference. So on top of the testing that I already have to do, finding out that these new students now, you know, have overdue testing puts a lot of stress on the provider as well as you know, having meetings to report on current levels and not having testing information available, having to say, okay, we're updating this document for the annual review, then we're testing, then we're going to have another meeting to go back to the document to make sure that it reflects the testing information. It's like, it's way too much. It's like an extra step, extra work for no reason. So having to clean up the mess, basically, you inherit a lot of... Um, I guess baggage or things that need to be cleaned up and you don't really know what you're walking into when you enter a school building. You hope that everything, you know, is up to date and but, you know, the problem is that I guess they just don't have people either doing their jobs or checking their information or the case managers are kind of, you know, overseeing or there's oversights. Things can happen. Like I said, it gets very, very hectic um, when it comes to dealing with IEPs and just how much work there is to do. But when you're a special educator, that's what you are committed to, the individualized educational plan. It makes sure that the, the students are being accommodated and receiving the services that they need. So I don't want to go over 10 minutes on this video, but my biggest thing about working in the schools, and I see why SLPs do not stay for very long periods of time, not only burnout, not only caseload numbers, but sometimes it really is just the people, and sometimes it really is just the way the county works. So, you know, teachers, some, some particular teachers, they may not understand a collaborative model. And really the collaborative model is really only to help the student, because if we're both communicating about what we're working on, you know, communication, especially for our, like our field, it's, it's woven throughout all our lives. Everything we do is somehow related to communication. You know, to getting our needs met, to share our opinions, to express 
uh, what, how we're feeling, what's important, if we're in danger. Like, it's all interwoven. So, if you cannot find a good team to work on, you don't feel valued, you don't feel respected, you're not going to want to stay someplace where you have to over and over explain and teach. And I understand that a lot of what we do is really teaching other professionals. You know, that communication really is a daily, integral, I don't know if I'm saying that word right, part of our lives. And... You know, if I have to teach you to respect my field, like that's an issue. There should be professional courtesy built in to, you know, a, a, a person going into your building. Not because I'm going into the building telling you you're doing something wrong, coming into your classroom because I'm observing you. No, I don't care what you do. Actually, I do care what you do. I can show you how to do something in a different way, but are you open to that? You know, and so I find like a lot of the resistance really has to do with pride. You thinking you know your job and can't nobody tell you nothing, that's an issue. I mean, I am very young in the field, but, like, I'm constantly learning. And sometimes I do. I learn a lot from the teachers with the way that they manage behaviors and things like that because I'm also new, you know. And every new building that I go to has a different culture, so I'm always going to be constantly learning. And so I think you need to just be open, you know, and... You know, I'm a very nice person. I think I come off as a very nice person. I may not be, you know, hee hee ha ha friendly, but because that's I'm, that's because I'm very serious about my job, and mostly I'm very serious about my students. And I feel like I've seen a lot of situations where just students were being offered a disservice, and that really does break my heart. But there's more to the story than I'm able to share in this one blog post. I'm just saying that today was a hard day because I did not feel valued as a professional. I did not feel respected as a colleague and as another professional in the room who's here to work with other professionals who are servicing the student. I um, try to, you know, forge relationships even when there's been past, you know, rifts or past difficulties. Um, because like I said, at the end of the day, it's really not about me not liking you, you not liking me. Like either way, I have to respect you because you are in your role and I'm in mine. Um, but if that interprofessional respect is not there, you know, I, I can see how people can get worn out when they have to, you know, be working with people who they feel like don't respect them or who feel like keep doing things to show um, that they don't value their input their strategies and things like that um and so hopefully you know the next place that i'm uh, blessed to go to and meet parents and students i won't have to um deal with this on such a consistent basis um but i think no school is perfect and of course i am still learning a lot and i'm learning you know how to go about presenting myself making sure that um, I'm open and I, and, I, and I present myself as being open and present myself as being open to collaboration. Um, but I also understand that there's just going to be some people that are just, you know, very stuck in their ways and don't, don't want people stepping on their feet and don't want people telling them what to do. But uh, that's my venting for the night. Thanks so much for listening.